won the eight National League Championship Series between the San Diego Padres and the Atlanta Braves. This time around, it's a sold-out Turner Field. Standing room only here in Atlanta to watch Game 6 as the Braves try to force Game 7 tomorrow night. And we welcome you to the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck, along with my partners, Tim McCarver and Bob Brenly. Tim, we look at the Atlanta Braves. Really, a couple of comebacks have come back in this series late, and they've had a couple of late comeback victories in the last two games. The Atlanta Braves are the last two games almost like a proud battered heavyweight in the late rounds. Usually the dependable San Diego Padre bullpen has had no problem throughout the course of the season. But over the last two games from the sixth inning on 11 runs have been scored against the Padre bullpen. Seven of those runs came on two swings back in game four against Dan Maselli. Andres Galarraga with a grand slam home run his first RBIs in the LCS and then the big blow Michael Tucker a three run home run to put the Braves ahead five to four and he hit it off Kevin Brown a lot of people are saying that that was not the right move to make by Bruce Bo Bochy. I think it was absolutely the right move to make. Yeah I think we all agree about that but the problem is it didn't work so now you turn to game six and uh, one one bright spot for the San Diego Padres has got to be the strained left quad for Greg Vaughn is good enough for him to play in this evening's game. You know Joe it's hard to believe that a guy that hit 50 homers and drove in 119 runs during the regular season could be a forgotten man but that's been the case in the NLCS limited to four at bats three in game one before the injury one pinch hit appearance against Greg Maddox in game five. They desperately need not only his bat but his presence in that lineup. Greg Vaughn is a guy that really carried the Padres offense through the early going of this season when the rest of them sputtered and Bruce Bochy is hoping he can carry him for one more victory. One thing though to keep in mind with the bad leg Greg Vaughn is playing left field today behind the left hander Sterling Hitchcock who will face a right handed hitting lineup with the only exception being the starter for Atlanta Tom Glavin so he will be tested in left field. Will we have a game seven. Will the Padres move on to the World Series with a win here today. We're about to find out pitch number one coming up after this from your home for the 1998 World Series. Stay with us game six coming up back to Turner Field while there are some empty seats you have to believe that's because it is a work day for most regular human beings. Most us baseball people <laughs> but they will be here before long and it's a standing room only crowd as the call was sent out by that terrific terrific crowd in San Diego they would pack in there and make some noise and the chop is out in full force as the Braves take the field if you believe that we would be here for game number six history would tell you that we wouldn't be here no team down three games to none in any one Major League Baseball postseason series had even forced a game six let alone a game seven let alone winning and advancing to the next round. A look at the starting lineup for the San Diego Padres. Gilvio Veras will lead off at second base. Tony Gwynn bats second in right field. Greg Vaughn back in the lineup hitting third in left field. His first start since game one against John Smoltz. Caminiti cleans up at third base. Jim Leyritz he's batting fifth. He's the catcher. Wally Joyner at first base batting sixth. Then it's Steve Finley in center. Chris Gomez at short. And Sterling Hitchcock is pitching and batting ninth. The defense for the Atlanta Braves. A different look. This is their right handed hitting lineup which includes Galarraga who believe it or not one of the most sure handed defensive first baseman in baseball has committed four errors in this National League Championship Series. And here's a look at the left hander Tom Glavin the National League's only 20 game winner during the regular season and most of you folks very familiar with Glavin he is a pitcher that throws everything off the fastball a good change up he lives on the outside corner especially that change up to right handed batters he knows to win and when to come inside he'll do that early in the game and then the second time through the order when he's in trouble he prefers to stay outside. Tom Glavin is a man as we've mentioned in the past he's stubborn he will stay with his game plan and that's working the outside part of the plate showing pitches inside off the plate just to give the batter something to look at and then go back away again. Tom Glavin worked game six of last year's National League Championship Series and lost that game to Kevin Brown and the Florida Marlins. He lasted only five and two thirds innings in a seven to four loss. Meanwhile in this postseason against Chicago in the division series he got a no decision seven strong innings and then in game two against San Diego he lost to Kevin Brown three to nothing he lasted six innings. 
So he has been busy, and as I mentioned, the only 20-game winner in the National League. The broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Glad you're with us. 419 locally. Eastern time zone, and we are ready for the start of game six. Gilvio Veras first up, and Glavin starts him with a ball in the dirt. Well, right out of the gate, we're going to be talking about the shadows as the shadows begin to creep across the pitcher's mound. And we'll talk about the hitting background and a high sky for these outfielders dealing with the sun. A late afternoon start in Atlanta. Two balls, no strikes from Glavin to Veras. Home plate umpire is Steve Ripley, Terry Tate at first, Larry Poncino at second, Tom Hallion at third, Greg Bonet down the left field line, Jerry Davis down the right field line. High again, it's 3 0. Oh. Of concern to the Atlanta Braves, Tommy Glavin walked six in his only other appearance. That was in game two against the Padres. Varis will take on 3 and 0 oh, and take ball 4 up and away on four straight a lead off walk. Not the start Glavin had in mind when he woke up this morning or Leo Mazzoni. And the Padres get an early base runner. And now you get into Gwynn, Vaughn and Caminiti. And you mentioned it Bob during the open. The presence of Vaughn should change the way both Gwynn and Caminiti are pitched to on either side of Greg Vaughn well, you would certainly think so and also uh, another byproduct of that is Sterling Hitchcock perhaps can be a little more relaxed going into this game knowing the Padres have their thumper back in that lineup offensively a lead off walk Gwynn <laughs> takes a strike exactly what you'd expect from Tony Gwynn sprays him around his outfield hits by direction. They play him to go the other way in the Atlanta outfield. Right field line is wide open. Double play ball to short. Weiss starts it. Graffinino in the middle. 6 4 3. If a ground ball double play is a pitcher's best friend, after you've walked the first hitter, he becomes a family member. <laughs> 6-4-3 easily turned. Four straight balls to Veris, and now a double play with Gwynn. The double play combination of Weiss and Graffinino turned it with Gwynn running. They had plenty of time. Now Vaughn, who won't run well either. With a strained left quadriceps muscle, takes a ball low and away. Bruce Bochy telling us before the game his leg Vaughn's leg felt so good they might not even wrap it before tonight's game. And if they did wrap it it's not much of a wrapping because it doesn't look out of the ordinary with his uniform pants but not only at the plate guys but as we mentioned out in left field backing up Sterling Hitchcock that leg will be tested here before this game is over. Two balls and a strike from Glavin. Even with the count 2 and 0, oh, Glavin stays away. A walk, a double play ball, two balls and a strike on Greg Vaughn. 3 and 1. John Vanderwall thought he might be the hero with that go ahead two out, two run home run in game 5. He hit that in the bottom of the 6th inning, but you know the rest. If you don't, you weren't watching the pregame. Three balls and a strike. Full count. Well, John Vanderwall is a hero to every pinch hitter in baseball, though. They all dream of that day when they get a chance to get a start defensively, and Vanderwall has certainly taken advantage of those opportunities in this series. Crowd noise here in Atlanta. Three balls, two strikes on Vaughn. Into center field off the end of the bat. Andrew Jones there. Inning over. Glavin gets around a lead off walk. The double play ball helped. Weiss, Williams, Chipper Jones coming up for the Braves in the bottom of the first. No score. 
Sterling Hitchcock and the San Diego Padres are out on the field to look at the starting lineup for the Atlanta Braves. They lead it off with Walt Weiss at short. Gerald Williams bats second in right field. Chipper Jones hits third at third. He has done very little in this NLCS. Andres Galarraga cleans up. He hasn't done much either with Lopez, Andrew Jones, Danny Bautista in left. Tony Graffinino at second base and Tom Glavin pitching and batting ninth. The defense for San Diego, Greg Vaughn back in the outfield. He's in left field, and the Padres only one error in this NLCS, and that came on a throwing error by Chris Gomez in game five. And a look at the left-hander working on three days rest, Sterling Hitchcock. Hitchcock in his career on three days rest. Has a record of 0-2 and, and an ERA of just under 8.5 as he starts Weiss out with strike one. Each of his last two starts before this evening, all of this evening included, have been under similar conditions. Bright sun behind the pitcher, shade between home plate and the mound. And he's been very effective. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball for strike two to Weiss. One and two. Well, this is the view that Jim Leyritz has from catcher cam. You can see the bright sunlight in the background and the darkness between the mound and home plate. And Weiss strikes out. A good start for Hitchcock, who struck out 11 under similar circumstances back in San Diego when he hooked up against Randy Johnson in game four, the clincher in the division series. We mentioned uh, the first game that Hitchcock pitched that most of his split finger fastballs will be out of the strike zone. That one, no exception. About ankle high to Walt Weiss. And now Gerald Williams. He didn't get a good start on that swing. Very late, strike one. Well, if you're a pitcher that has some kind of an off speed pitch that you can sell with that good arm speed, and Hitchcock does have that split finger as well as the curveball we saw right there. Those are the pitches that are going to be hard for hitters to pick up until the visibility improves. 0 oh 2 on Williams, who is 1 out of 10 in this series with San Diego. Williams just got a piece. Now, while Sterling Hitchcock was adamant that he wanted the ball and was ready on three days' rest, and made that point clear as he draws booze for not handing the bat to the bat boy and throwing it back toward home plate. He made it clear to Dave Stewart and Bruce Bochy that he wanted it. Talking to Bruce Bochy before the game after Brown worked in game five he said there was really no way that he was going to start Kevin Brown in this game no matter what was said. Nothing in two and Williams grounds to Joyner. First two are gone for the Braves here in the bottom of the first. Well, I think even if Kevin Brown had not pitched in relief, this is the right move to make. You look at Sterling Hitchcock's scouting report. We'll go to the splitter and the changeup when he's ahead in the count, especially the split finger. His fastball is better than people realize. It's sneaky quick. And as Tim mentioned, he gets batters to swing at balls out of the strike zone as well as any pitcher in the game. Chipper Jones with two out, nobody on. We showed you only one RBI in this series, five out of 20 at the plate. Kevin Brown will either work at game seven tomorrow night here in Atlanta or game one of the World Series Saturday night in New York as a strike drops into Chipper Jones. Seven of the seats here at Turner Field occupied by Yankee scouts. Imagine that, seven scouts for the Yankees here. All with the same opinion <laughs> on everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> One and two, the count on Chipper Jones. Gene Michael, formerly the general manager, formerly the manager of the Yankees. Two out bases empty. Jones strikes out in a very strong first inning for Sterling Hitchcock, working on three days rest. Strikes out two after one no score. If the Atlanta hitters could see the split finger fastball as well as we do right here, they would have more success with it. All three outs recorded by Hitchcock in the bottom of the first inning with the splitter. Two strikeouts and a ground out. Now Caminiti leads off for San Diego and takes the ball up and away. The numbers for Caminiti. 
couple of important home runs especially at the time the second one put San Diego out in front in game five and here's a look at it first pitch against John Smoltz first home run in his career against John Smoltz in the first inning put San Diego up to nothing Caminiti's first home run was here in Atlanta game one the winner in the tenth inning and that's up the middle for a leadoff base hit. Second inning in a row that the Padres have put their leadoff man on and now Lay Rich Joyner and Finley will try to chase Caminiti home. Well, there's no question this is what the Padre hitters are going to have to do against Tom Glavin get up on the plate a little bit try to line that pitch on the outside part back up the middle or into right field. Tommy Glavin almost had a skate save there which is apropos of course because he played hockey I know we got to bring that up every time he played <laughs> hockey Layritz takes a ball down and in. he did that so we would bring it up that's right drafted by the Los Angeles Kings in 1984 out of high school you've been saying that since the 1991 postseason that is exactly right one ball no strikes on Layritz big numbers in this postseason good swing there one ball one strike that was hittable right there Tommy Glavin trying to come inside to Layritz. Wow postseason power I'll say. Postseason home run ratio per at bats. Minimum of five and Layritz qualifies he is at seven. And only forty four at bats in the postseason two and one. Long shadows here at Turner Field. Two balls and a strike. Two and two from Glavin. Bob, you and I uh, looking out in right field and seeing Gerald Williams shading his eyes from the sun, putting that glove up. Glove up, glasses down. Tough sun field and right today at Turner Field. The 2 2. We'll count now on Layritz. That's what Gerald Williams is looking at from his spot in right field. That bright sun shining over the roof of Turner Field. Now the 3 2 to Layritz. Runner goes, and Layritz got a piece. Caminetti running as the Padres try to get a little action going on the bases here in the second. A defensive swing. Layritz chases a pitch down out of the strike zone. He knew Caminiti was on the move. Perhaps some holes would be opened up on the infield. It took a shot and only able to foul it off. With the right handed hitter hitting and the runner running on a 3 2 count, right handers are more apt to swing at that ball. Ball out of the strike zone. The left hander can't see him running, but the right hander can. Going again, and Layridge breaks his bat. That'll get Caminetti down to second on the 5 3 ground up. One away here in the San Diego second inning. And now Wally Joyner walks in with Finley on deck. Usually on a borderline pitch like that, you have it more of a tendency to swing at it because you want to protect the runner. The runner does not have a good jump. Now, this is a ball that Laritz perhaps wouldn't swing at normally, but he has to. He can't take a chance on the umpire calling it a ball because it was inside. Now, Joyner. And a strike over the outside corner to Wally, who has driven in only one run in this NLCS. Joiner three out of ten in his career against Tom Glavin. High one and one. And once again the Braves are shifted for Joiner to hit the ball to the opposite field. The Braves shift in the outfield more than any team in the major leagues and that's a direct result of the control of their pitching staff in general Tom Glavin specifically. Joyner reaching strike two. Hey. 
That looked like a hard slider to Wally Joyner. Glavin looks a little crisper today than he did the other night. A ball and two strikes. Joyner strikes out. Two gone. First strikeout for Glavin. Bob was talking about the outfield. Why were they shifting the left-handed hitter to left field? Well, this is the reason. Fastball on the outside corner. Fastball misses. Slider off the plate. Slider off the plate. Glavin pitching to the defense. There's only one place you can hit that ball, and that's to the opposite field. Right. So Joyner is now four out of 13 in this series, and it's up to Steve Finley, who is six out of 18 in this NLCS with two RBIs. Go ahead, run at second with two out. The fastball's high for ball one. Finley has 57 career at bats against Tom Glavin. He's hitting 298 against this left hander in his long career. 2 0. Considerably better than Steve did against left handed pitching this year, batting only 188. That was the lowest average against left handed pitching of anybody in the National League with 100 or more at bats. Caminiti a leadoff single down to second on the ground out by Leyritz. Joyner struck out. Finley takes a strike and it's two and one. Steve Finley a middle in fastball hitter especially the ball is down and over that inside part of the plate. He will when the count is in his favor reach out and hook that ball away from him also. That's over the outside corner two and two. I think that's what he's going to have to do, Bob. Full count with the number eight hitter Gomez on deck. No score in the second, and Steve Finley trying to change that. Second walk handed out by Glavin. It's two on, two out for Gomez. Now Gomez walks in just three out of 17 in this series with no RBIs. Not only in this NLCS, but no RBIs in the entire postseason for Gomez. Two on, two out. And a ball to Gomez with Hitchcock, the pitcher, to follow Gomez in case you're wondering. It looks like Gomez has moved up on the plate. It looks like he's closer to the plate than he was the first time he faced Glavin. Not only with his feet, he looks like he's leaning out over there. Over but low, 2 0. Oh. Well, not your typical automatic start for Glavin again here this afternoon. In second inning trouble, the 2 0 to Gomez. On the corner, 2 and 1. Lavin pitched around a leadoff walk in the first. Gwynn bounced into a double play. A leadoff single by Caminiti here in the second. Later a two-out walk, and now the 2-1 to Gomez. To the left side, foul ball, 2-2. Two and two. Lavin comes inside so rarely on right-handed hitters that when he does, invariably, they lock themselves up. They get jammed on that pitcher, so trained to look away, look away on Tom Glavin. That when he does come on the inside part of the plate, that ball's actually right down the middle. And you're not really ready to put a good swing on it. Gomez just tops that ball harmlessly down the third baseline. A 
And this Turner Field crowd making some more noise, wanting the top of the second to end right here. To the second baseman, Graffinino. Out at first, and the Padres are finished in the second. No runs, a hit, a walk, two left. Inning and a half complete. Game six, no score. Galarraga first up, the cleanup hitter for Atlanta against Hitchcock. And a strength on a breaking ball from the left hander. Not much in the NLCS from Galarraga. The home run, the RBIs all on one swing in game four. One ball, one strike. Interesting. <laughs> A Yankee banner covering some of the bunting here at Turner Field. World Series will begin on Saturday night. We know it will begin in New York. But we don't know who will be the visiting club, either Atlanta or San Diego, up three games to two. Our congratulations to Joe Torre and the New York Yankees, who have now won 121 games this year. The 2 1 to Galarraga's right down the middle, 2 and 2. Also to the Cleveland Indians. They, Absolutely. They put up a lot better battle than most people anticipated against the high powered Yankees. Where is it? Where is it? You can see there's actually some sunlight in between the shadows now. The ball kind of flashed as it came to home plate. Hey, the New York Yankees. Um, very glad that they are not facing Jim Tomey anymore. What a series he had. There's a career for Andres Galarraga. Last four seasons, most in the National League, 517 RBIs. Three of those years out in Colorado. Three balls, two strikes on Galarraga. I think Hitchcock has to throw Galarraga something other than the fastball right here. He's shown him a couple of fastballs in this sequence, but generally when he gets to two strikes, that split finger is the pitch he's going to go to. On three and two, he misses high with a riding fastball and a leadoff walk. The Braves have their first base runner of the game. It looked like uh, Dave Stewart, the pitching coach, said that he pushed that fastball. And what uh, Stewart meant was that you lead with the elbow and you kind of coax it through the strike zone. Unfortunately for Hitchcock, it was up and away to Galarraga. Mr. Carter checking out the action, trying to catch the game through the glare here at Turner Field. President <laughs> Carter watching as first pitch is a strike to Javi Lopez. Either that or somebody stole his binoculars. I'm not sure what he was doing. He's got good enough seats. I don't think he needs them. The 0 1 to Lopez. One on, nobody out. Ball and a strike. A lot of influence in peanut farming. Get good seats. Of course, he went on to bigger and better things after that. Yes, he did. You think he pays full price for peanuts here at the ballpark, or does he get some kind of a discount? He gets brings discount. his own. One ball, one strike on Javi Lopez. Two balls and a strike on Lopez. They tried to jack up the atmosphere around here before the game, didn't they? I, they started pumping in some ACDC, some Beastie Boys, some Green Day, some Hasselhoff, some Shatner. <laughs> they had them rocking in the seats here before the game. And I think the message was sent out loud and clear back in San Diego. They won a home field advantage here in Atlanta, which I'm not so sure you could say in the first two games because of the empty seats. This is a much more enthused crowd here for game six. Lopez with a two ball one strike count. Out in front of that pitch two and two. Michael Tucker with five RBIs in game five. That ties him with one other player in postseason play to get five RBIs from the number eight spot in the order. Lopez strikes out. A fastball blown right past him and strikeout number three for Sterling Hitchcock. He 
airs this one out. Now we mentioned Hitchcock is sneaky quick. If you see enough off speed pitches eventually as a hitter it almost lulls you to sleep at the plate. You start to guess or at least think off speed pitch along with that pitcher and that's when that fastball can be sneaky quick. Throws one right by a good fastball hitter. Such a neat look from catcher cam because of as you mentioned that one streak of sunlight coming through in between the mound and the plate. It's got to make that fastball more difficult to hit and if Hitchcock is ever going to take advantage of it now is the time to do it Andrew Jones with one on one out. You see that little bit of sunlight just in front of the pitcher's mound. High fastball strike one. As the ball's on its way to the plate it almost looks like somebody taking a flash picture of it. It goes through the sunlight it brightens immediately and then disappears again. Now you know what it was like hitting for Mark McGuire this year. <laughs> All the flash bulbs going off. That's right. <laughs> pitch after pitch after pitch. Man. One ball one strike that other player by the way in postseason play who had five RBI's in a game from the eight hole Tony Lazeri they did in game two of the 1936 World Series the Yankees against the Giants at the Polo Grounds. Jones lost his bat and popped it foul back and out of play so five RBI's for Lazeri and five RBI's. In game number five for Michael Tucker as we take a look at this strike two on Jones. He's lost the grip on a high fastball. Once again Andrew Jones a very good fastball hitter and a little bit tardy on that one. Game of a lifetime Monday night in San Diego for Michael Tucker. That gets away from Leritz down to second the go ahead run Galarraga. Not a fastball that got away from Sterling Hitchcock. Up and away, and Jim Laritz going after it loses his mask. I'll tell you that catcher camp takes a beating when Laritz wears it. <laughs> Here's a look at it before the beating. <laughs> After the beating. So a 2 2 count. The wild pinch by Hitchcock, runner at second, and Jones grounds to short. Gomez gobbles it up, two gone. Galarraga stays put. The batter will be Danny Batista. Catcher Cam has officially passed on for the rest of the night. <laughs> Jim Laritz has uh, been a part of many postseason heroics, but he's 0 for 2 with Catcher Cam. <laughs> Had that collision the other day with Walt Weiss on the Great throw by Vanderwall, and now they wild pitch by Hitchcock. <laughs> and now Danny Batista, the number seven hitter. Galarraga at second and two out, no score in the second. Not much of a swing as Batista couldn't hold up, strike one. Here's the throw from John Vanderwall. Getting Walt Weiss at the plate in game three. Hitchcock was pitching in this game, by the way, and here's another death of catcher Cam. <laughs> Compliments of Jim Leritz. When Tim says he's 0 for 2, the 0 1 pitch to Batista. A ball and a strike. Batista looking for his first postseason RBI. Late swing, strike two. Hitchcock up to 91 on that fastball. He's throwing considerably harder in this game than he has in his past two postseason starts. His fastball topping out at 88, 89 miles an hour. A little extra zip on that fastball today. Now the one two to Batista two and two. The number eight hitter Graffinino for Bobby Cox waits on deck.
Hitchcock trying to pitch around a leadoff walk here in the second. Blocked by Leritz. But he doesn't keep it close enough, and Galarraga gets down to third on what should be the second wild pitch of the inning. It is. I think Andres Galarraga inadvertently hit uh, Ken Caminetti in the left elbow on this play by Leritz, hurrying his throw. Chris Gomez backing it up. Caminetti making sure. I think he came down on his helmet, kind of hit his funny bone, left elbow. Dangerous situation now. We know Hitchcock likes to throw that split in the dirt. We've seen it happen already this at bat to Danny Batista with a runner at third. Now it really gets on Jim Layward's shoulder to keep that ball in front. 3 2 pitch. Got him looking to end the inning. Two strikeouts in this inning. Four on the afternoon for Hitchcock back to Atlanta after a break from your local Fox station. Well, we earlier saw the release on a split finger from Sterling Hitchcock. This is the curveball. He leads a little bit more with the back of his hand. The rotation will be over the top. You see the downward movement on that pitch. And he gets the called third strike on Danny Batista to end the inning. And now gets to lead off the third against Tom Glavin. And that's ball one. It'll be Hitchcock, Varis, and Gwynn. Anybody gets on Greg Vaughn. One ball, one strike. Now Hitchcock didn't hit much during the regular season, was just seven out of 50, but he had an important hit. Also scored a run in game three. The Padres took the lead. A tester for Chipper Jones. On the run, he makes the play, one down. And Hitchcock slap. is. Slap hitter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> one out, nobody on, and here's Varis. Kilvia walked his first time and takes a strike. Bear is trying to reach base for the second time against Glavin, who has just retired the leadoff man for the first time in this game. One ball, one strike. In game two, Kilvio Varis was the only San Diego Padre to drive in a run against Tom Glavin. Put Glavin on the hook for the loss, a loss he received thanks in large part to the pitching of Kevin Brown. Ball and two strikes on Varis. Just inside, two and two. One thing Tommy Glavin rarely does is come inside twice in a row against right handed batters. This is not necessarily a pitch designed to get him out too far inside. He'll go back out there, I would imagine. Nope, coming back in. On two and two, and Ferris is still up there, full count. We talked the other day about putting a hitter in a rocking chair. Pitch him away, pitch him in. Pitch him away, pitch him in. And one way to keep a hitter from guessing along with the pitcher is to double up. Go inside twice, go away twice. Hard hit right at Chipper Jones. Two out for the Padres in the third. And that means that Quinn will bat with the bases empty. Tony hit into a double play, 6 4 3, back in the first inning. It's now just four out of 22 in this series. Strike one. Two out, nobody on. One ball, one strike. Padres had an informal workout here at Turner Field yesterday after arriving in Atlanta, and most of the guys just came out and Worked out a little bit, broke a good sweat, but one man stayed around to hit for a considerable amount of time. Guess who? This guy who takes ball too low. Can't get enough of it. 
Tony Gwynn stayed out on the field and hit a considerable amount of time after his teammates were all gone. The eight time batting champion waits the count in his favor two balls and a strike. Here are Tom Glavin's thoughts on how you pitch to Tony Gwynn throughout the course of a game. He's certainly one of the few guys that you, you know you almost have to pitch him differently if you see him four times a game you got to pitch him differently four times a game because he's going to make those adjustments every at bat and um, you know the thing with Tony I guess is that you just you just do everything you can to have him come up to the plate in a situation where it's not you know a situation that he can beat you. Well he gets a two out base hit here to keep the third inning alive and Tony Gwynn is now one for two. And Vaughn will get a chance to take his hacks against Glavin in the third. Yet another hit by Tony Gwynn with two strikes on him. Place the ball in a hole like he's shooting pool. That's that 5.5 hole we've been talking about between the shortstop and third baseman. Uncanny ability to wait on the ball and still has quick enough hands to handle the heat. And unfazed by two strikes as he just showed once again. Now Vaughn. Side for ball one. In the postseason, one home run for Vaughn. That came in the division series against Houston. 0 for 5 in this series with Atlanta. That will get out of play for strike one. Catch your cam at rest. <laughs> And that's Jim Lairitz, the background getting ready for an at bat. So evidently somebody has revived or resuscitated catcher cam after its collision with the ground. And it's probably sitting there with the rest of his catcher's gear on one of the steps of the dugout. Vaughn with a one ball, one strike count, runner at first, two down. Strike two. He's kind of set himself up for an ominous shot right there, hasn't he, with the sun behind him? The King. That's his nickname. There it is. Mugging for the camera. A ball and two strikes. <laughs> Into center field, Andrew Jones can't get there in time. Keeps it in front of him. Back to back singles to center by Wynn and Vaughn with two out. And all of a sudden, the Padres have another scoring chance with Caminiti coming up. Outstanding hitting by Greg Vaughn. Watch him reach way out beyond the edge of the plate. That ball was six inches outside. I do not think Andrew Jones had a good jump on this ball. I don't think he saw it right away. Normally, he plays shallow, but you have to respect the power of Greg Vaughn. And Tom Glavin taking a lot of that power away by the location of his pitches to Greg Vaughn. So Glavin with two on behind him deals with Caminiti who singled his first time up. Takes a ball. All three hits by the Padres have been base hits up the middle and as Bob mentioned earlier that's the way to approach Tommy Glavin. You try to pull him he'll eat you up. Outside corner, one ball, one strike. Looked a few inches outside. The call to strike, one ball, one strike on Caminiti. Two on, two out, no score, third inning. Inside corner, strike two. That's that pitch we've been talking about when Glavin does sneak that fastball in the inside corner right handed hitters are just not prepared to hit it. That's a pitch that Ken Caminiti normally would come out of his shoe swinging at against any other pitcher. A ball and two strikes on Caminiti. Inning over. Strikeout number two for Glavin. 
The Padres have stranded four, hit into a double play. Bottom of the third, no score. Prior to game four of the upcoming World Series, you can watch for the Gillette Mach 3 Strength Zone Challenge. You will see one lucky fan get the chance to throw a pitch for $2 million. That'll happen before game four on Fox for the 98 World Series, either here in Atlanta or in San Diego. But we understand they have already sold out, flat out sold out, 65,000 plus seats a game for games three, four, and five, which is a late addition to the early report that we got that there were some tickets remaining for game five. These Padre players will tell you they're a long way away from games three, four, and five of the World Series. One ball, one strike. And Graffinino, and that hurt. Coming up and catching Leyritz on the arm. Well, that's the second split finger that Hitchcock has thrown that bounced about six or seven feet in front of home plate. That ball almost hit the infield grass. The thing it doesn't have a mic on it after that ball hit Leyritz. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Graffinino, the number eight hitter, then Glavin, then Weiss. Against Hitchcock, who struck out four. Just low, three and one. If it were not uh, for that double by Graffinino the other day, we may be in New York. And the Braves may be home. John Rocker scoring all the way from first base. He told us before the game, the most fun he's had since high school, running the bases and scoring and running into Carlos Hernandez. There's John. <laughs> After walking, scoring on that double by Graffinino, and then Graffinino scoring on the wild throw home. That was eventually was the game-winning run scored. Graffinino's jammed and he pops it up to Joyner. Leadoff man is gone. Here's the out package in the first and second inning for Sterling Hitchcock in the first inning. The splitter gets Walt Weiss. The splitter gets Gerald Williams. And the splitter gets Chipper Jones. Then in the second, a dose of fastball after fastball. And the curveball on the 3-2 count to get Danny Batista. So he's mixing them up. And now after Graffinino fouled out, Glavin just won the Silver Slugger Award for hitting pitchers. This year in the National League was 17 out of 71, drove in seven. Took a strike, now another, it's 0-2. The earlier a pitcher can establish all his pitches in a ball game, the more defensive swings you're going to get from that opposing team. Many times a pitcher won't have a good feel for his breaking ball early, won't have good movement on the split finger early. And as the game goes on, they add pitches or subtract pitches from their arsenal depending on what's working. But it appears early that Hitchcock has them all going tonight. Still 0 2 on Glavin. Two gone, and that's strikeout number five for Sterling Hitchcock, again working on three days rest. And he is trying to do something that would be a rarity among starting pitchers against the Atlanta Braves in the postseason in the 90s. Sterling Hitchcock, and you see the strikeout of Glavin tries to become just the fourth starting pitcher in any one series to defeat the Atlanta Braves two times in that series. Jack Morris did it in 91, the World Series. Wakefield of the 92 NLCS. Kevin Brown, last year's NLCS, and Sterling Hitchcock, he puts his name on that list. Not only will he accomplish that feat, but he will send San Diego to the World Series. Look at Kevin Brown who did it a year ago. Weiss, one ball, one strike. Kevin Brown came on, and I enjoyed his comments after the game. He was most disappointed. He said, because now people are going to second guess my manager. When to all of us at the time, and even after the fact, it seemed the right move. 
And it just didn't happen as the Padres went for the kill in game five in San Diego. And graciously, Kevin said, if you want to second guess anything, second guess that walk that I gave up in the top of the eighth inning. Base is empty, two out, and Weiss pops it into right. Fighting the sun, Gwynn is there. He has to charge in the basket catch to end the inning. Bob and Tim told you it would be tough to see out there if Tony Gwynn didn't believe him. He does now. After three, no score, game six. Question from Merv Rettman after that last out. Tony have glasses on. Yeah. Kind of dope was out there. Gwynn initially backed up to allow that that ball to get above the sun and then had to come streaking in and make the shoestring catch. That's what Tony Gwynn is staring right at. Leritz at the plate leading it off for San Diego taking a strike. Leritz bounced out to third his first time up. Joyner will follow and then Finley. No score fourth inning. Two balls and a strike from Tom Blavin. Now it's Gerald Williams who has to fight the sun out in right. That's backing out of play. Here's Jim Leyritz on his postseason success. I don't know. It's one of those things, like I said, I hope I don't figure it out because it's, it's worked out well. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things the postseason is, is the time I like to play. And you know, I've always said I really strived in New York because it was like center stage. And I enjoyed having that pressure every day that, you know, I talked to Mike Piazza and he said every day is a World Series in New York. And I said, you know what? That's what I like. I like that. And uh, since I've been here, like I said, I've had some success in the postseason. It's been nice. Three balls, two strikes from Glavin. I think a lot of his success has to do with that area between his ears. Jim Leyritz is a very smart hitter. And at this time of year, opposing pitchers are going to attack your weakness. If you know what your weakness is, that's a pitch you can look for. You may not handle it well. He handled that well in the center, but Andrew Jones back to get it on a line drive out, one down in the fourth. Well, at least you, it gives you an idea how a pitcher is going to try to get you out. During the regular season, you may wait for a mistake to hit the ball hard. You may consistently look from the middle of the plate in wherever your strength happens to be. But in the postseason you can be sure they're going to attack your weaknesses consistently. Particularly in league championship series. The problem comes when you play the other league in the World Series. That's when hitting becomes doubly tough. Ball one to Wally Joyner. Joyner had Caminiti at second base his first time up and he struck out. One ball one strike. The start what a job by Sterling Hitchcock so far. Has yet to allow a hit. He has walked one and thrown two wild pitches that's all struck out five along the way. Joiner, one of the many potential free agents on this Padre team. Two balls, two strikes, joins the list of Kevin Brown and Caminiti and Finley. Tony Gwynn getting up there in years and his body starting to ache a little more. So many view this chance by the Padres in 1998. It's maybe the final opportunity for this group. 2 2 to Joiner. Padres have an option on Jim Leyritz. Greg Vaughn seemingly coming out of nowhere after a year and a half. In San Diego where he didn't do much at the plate. That's just outside the full count on Joyner. Seventy second pitch of the game coming from Glavin. It's hit hard to Galarraga. Joiner the second out for the Padres in the fourth. Let's give you our Aflac trivia question. What teams that met in the World Series had the highest combined regular season win total.
Bob just looks at me and shakes his head. <laughs> well, you would think it would be the New York Yankees and whoever comes out of this NLCS. But I'm sure there's a catch there somewhere. Well, coming in, it should be. It will be. No matter who wins this NLCS, combined with the Yankees 114, it will be the highest total. But we asked the question prior to this year. Prior to this year. Two out, nobody on. A strike to Finley, who walked his first time up. One ball, one strike. Cleveland won 111 games in 1954. And they played the Giants. I don't remember how many games the Giants won. So I'll guess that. One ball, one strike, two out, nobody on. Two and one on Steve Finley, who walked his first time up. Cubs won 116 games in 1906. I don't even know who they played in the World Series. Did they play Boston? I don't remember. Two balls, two strikes on Finley. I have learned the lesson when in doubt on these trivia questions, just throw out Baltimore. Just throw out the Orioles. And hope you catch something. Two out, nobody on. Two balls, two strikes. Finley fouls it back and out of play. 1906, the Cubs played the White Sox. And the White Sox ended up with the victory four games to two. I'll go with you, Joe. I think Baltimore had something to do with this answer to our trivia question. Bases empty with two down. Finley trying to extend this top of the fourth. Down the left field line, slicing foul. Still two and two. Tommy Glavin and Greg Maddox, both great pitchers, but they are completely different in how they finish off hitters. Maddox will do it in one or two pitches. 88 pitches last year in a nine inning game. Glavin always with a 2 2 count or a 3 2 count or a 3 1 count. Bases empty, two down, and Finley pounds it into deep right field. Got under it just a bit, and near the track, Williams fights the sun and makes the catch. The Padres go in order for the first time here in game six. Bottom of the fourth inning, no score. To the viewfinder of Rob Menchel's camera. Our camera people have done such a great job during this NLCS. Al Friedman, Dennis Shannon will try to get their names on later in the telecast as we approach 5.30 here in the Eastern time zone. Gerald Williams takes a ball in the dirt from Sterling Hitchcock. Williams went one ball, one strike. Mentioned earlier in the telecast, that Braves hitters will try to lay off that splitter in the dirt. It is rarely a strike, but it looks like a strike. And then the bottom Wait, falls out. Of it. Clarence Jones, hitting instructor for the Atlanta Braves. He's been here a long time now. As Williams lines a base hit into center field. His second hit of this series, it's a leadoff hit to start the fourth. And that big turn by Gerald Williams. You just love to see guys who can run make that big turn at first base and give them a chance to go to second in case of a momentary bobble. If you don't run from home to first the way Gerald Williams did, you have no chance of going right. from first to second. Give yourself an opportunity. Here's Chipper Jones, one on, nobody out. Williams started and stopped over at first base. Ball one to Chipper, who is five out of 21 in this series. 
Showing bunt a little bit on that first pitch. He's only put down one sacrifice all season. That's just a decoy to try to draw the defense a little bit out of position. And then try to slap the ball by Cam Nitty has come in a couple of steps at third base. Chipper Jones in his fifth season. It seems like he's been around longer than that. 349 career average in league championship series play. So coming in, as we mentioned, not much in this LCS with San Diego, five out of 20, with only one RBI. One ball, one strike. Chipper Jones even carried the decoy a little further. He stepped out of the batter's box and had Bobby Dews, the third base coach, go through another set of signs. He's planting a seed in the Padres' defense mind that maybe something's up right here. And then he swings away at the next pitch. A look at Williams. Not only do hitters for the Braves have to lay off the splitter in the dirt, but base runners have to be particularly vigilant on the bases. Because that ball in the dirt, the splitter is the toughest off-speed pitch to block for a catcher. Unpredictable bounces. Williams running, swing and a miss, throw down. Gerald Williams, a stolen base. Mayers threw out only one of 11 base dealers on the regular season. That time Williams got a huge jump against Hitchcock. No chance for Jim Layritz. First stolen base of this postseason for Gerald Williams. Often the type of pitch that a catcher has to handle determines whether a stolen base is successful or not. That was a splitter. Layritz had to stay back. The swinging. Swing and miss by Jones and a late throw. Hitchcock keeping an eye on Gerald Williams, who's in scoring position with nobody out. With Jones up now, Galarraga and Javi Lopez to follow. The third for Caminiti. Chipper Jones, the second out of the in, first out of the inning, I should say, but did not advance the runner. And there sits Gerald Williams with one away. And now a visit from pitching coach Dave Stewart with Galarraga and Javi Lopez coming up. Our Aflac trivia question What teams that met in the World Series had the highest combined regular season win total? Our Aflac trivia answer Baltimore Orioles won 108 games. Cincinnati Reds won 102 in 1970 for a combined total of 210. Nice going, guys. Yeah, we got, we got half. half. <laughs> we know that the New York Yankees, the 1998 version, 114 victories, will combine with either San Diego's 98 or Atlanta's 106 in the upcoming World Series. Here's Galarraga. I think you just go ahead and pitch to Galarraga as though nobody were on base. You start fooling with that split finger fastball, you have a wild pitch, and Williams ends up at third base with one out. Ball one to Galarraga. Now, Williams has stolen third base twice on the season. Andrew Jones is the only Brave with more steals of 30 at three on the season. It's a play Bobby Cox likes to use if he has one of his speedier base runners at second, but the Padres are holding him close. Kilvio Veras tucked right in close to second base. A fastball past Galarraga, one ball, one strike. That fastball flew right through Andres Galarraga's hot zone right there, right down the pipe. 92 mile an hour fastball. Hitchcock has had an impressive fastball, impressive stuff throughout this game. We're in the fourth inning, no score. Runner at second, one out. And a strike over the outside corner to Galarraga, one and two. 
Hitchcock's holding the ball. Often that prevents a guy from that timing mechanism that prevents him from trying to steal a base. Often that's better than throwing over to first or throwing back to second. Just hold the ball. The one two. Galarraga strikes out. Two gone and strikeout number six for Sterling Hitchcock. Good sequence here by Sterling Hitchcock. Misses outside. Hits the outside corner with a fastball. Hits the outside corner again. And then gets the swinging strike on a pitch once again out of the strike zone. Remember the scouting report at the top of the show. Hitchcock will get most of his strikeouts on pitches that are not even near the strike zone. Javi Lopez looking for the two out RBI hit. Williams was at second with nobody out. Jones grounded out to third. Galarraga struck out. Now you can see Kilby Overis. He's more straight away in a second base position. Not as concerned with Gerald Williams because there are two outs now. Strike one on Lopez who struck out his first time. And Williams is still jockeying around out there trying to time Hitchcock's delivery to home plate. I think he would try to steal third if he got the jump. Only because Hitchcock does throw so many pitches in the dirt. If Williams could advance to third base early in this at bat he may have an opportunity to score on a wild pitch pass ball. Normally you would not attempt to steal third base with two, two outs. Starts and stops again and Lopez grounds to third. Hamanetti keeps it on the infield an infield hit to make it first and third two out. Good play by Caminetti to knock it down and save a run. It really was and that's what infielders are trained to do play a step or two deeper with a runner on at second and two outs and if you can't make the play throw your body in front of it. That ball hit the left elbow of Caminetti but it does prevent Gerald Williams momentarily from scoring. I guess it hit the, the heel of the glove. So Caminetti does his job and now it's back to Hitchcock with first and third two out no score fourth inning and Andrew Jones at the plate. Pop up foul. And it will get out of play about six rows back. Andrew it. Jones only two RBIs in this series. Excuse me, Joe. It takes a little more courage to call for that splitter where they run her on at third base. But you can't allow that to affect your decision. When putting down fingers, the ball's in the dirt. You got to block it. it. Puts a lot of pressure on the catcher. One ball, one strike. No question, Andrew Jones likes to pull the ball, especially against a left-hander like Sterling Hitchcock. First and third two out two balls and a strike on Andrew Jones with Danny Batista waiting next. Jones is jammed and he pops it into shallow left. Gomez wants it has it scoreless through four Sterling Hitchcock gets around two hits in the fourth inning we go to the fifth here in game six Padres and Braves square off to see who goes on to the World Series that's the one thing we do know Saturday on Fox Saturday night either the Padres or the Braves take on the New York Yankees and we'll be on the air 730 Eastern 430 Pacific only on Fox Chris Gomez leads off with Hitchcock and Ferris to follow. Two balls no strikes as Glavin is now up to 81 pitches already. 
before recording it out here in the fifth inning. Clavin threw 121 pitches through six innings in game two. As Tim mentioned earlier, not unusual for Glavin. Very much a nibbler, works a lot of deep counts. Outside corner, two and one on Gomez. Gomez hard hit, but right at the shortstop, Weiss. Low throw, but out, one away, and Gomez 0 for 2. Infielders have so many decisions to make on balls even hit at them. Do I charge it? Do I back up? Do I charge it? Do I back up? Walt Weiss holds his ground. The in-between hop almost knocks him backwards and recovers in time to get his counterpart. So Gomez is retired and now Hitchcock. He bounced out to third his first time up. Strike one. You talk to all the infielders, particularly the third baseman, where balls get on top of them in a hurry. And reading a hop, one of the more important things in fielding a routine ground ball. Try to keep it routine. Strike two on Hitchcock while we have a moment. I want to pass along get well wishes to legendary scout Ellis Clary, who suffered a nasty car accident. But on the road to recovery now and resting comfortably down in Valdosta, Georgia. 0-2 pitch to Hitchcock is just outside. And while we're sending greetings, I'd like to send birthday wishes to my son Michael, celebrating right. his 12th birthday today back in Scottsdale, Arizona. Have a piece of cake for me. Base is empty with one out here in the fifth inning. No score of game six. Still one and two on Hitchcock. But Tim talking about infielders and reading hops one of the things they tell you as a general rule if, if you're ever caught in between you're always better off being more aggressive charge the ball balls to your feet forward not backward two balls two strikes from Glavin not only that but it looks better if you charge the ball than if you try to go back on your heels and that ball eats you up boy that's embarrassing. Off the plate, Glavin off the mound. Two out. Here's a listen in to Leo Mazzoni, pitching coach for the Braves, talking to Bobby Cox about Tom Glavin's stuff today. A lot of movement on his ball over there. Got a lot of movement on his ball today, which some have sailed out of the zone and would be one of the reasons why he is pushing 90 pitches now here in the fifth inning. Movement and location much more important than velocity. Gilvio Veras has walked and grounded out. To the right side, Graffanino flags it down and retires Veras to end the inning. The Padres go in order for the second consecutive inning. Glavin has now retired seven straight. No score halfway through game six. Five, Hank Aaron Drive, Turner Field here in Atlanta, Georgia. Joe Buck, Bob Brenly, Tim McCarver. We're still here. And uh, one thing that we knew coming in, guys, you know what to expect pretty much out of Tom Glavin. I don't think anybody knew what to expect out of Sterling Hitchcock working on three days rest and he, he's matching Glavin pitch for pitch. He has everything going for him today. Good fastball, good curveball, and a good split. And now Danny Batista leads off against Sterling Hitchcock and Danny looks at a strike. Batista, Graffinino, Glavin, bottom three in the order for Atlanta. Batista struck out his first time up. Sterling Hitchcock has struck out six. A strike two on Batista. A 
A ball and two strikes as Hitchcock brings it in. Two and two. From catcher Cam on two and two. Ground ball to third. Caminiti a long throw. Great arm. One away. Caminiti relishes the times. He gets a chance to show off the arm and that was one of them. He backed up a step or two on this high bouncer down the third baseline. Plays the backhand. Oh, what a great feeling that must be for an infielder to know that you can back up two or three steps almost into foul territory and still have enough arm to throw out a guy that runs pretty well. Three gold glove awards for Caminiti. And usually once or twice a year will come up with some crazy play at third. One where he threw while seated a couple of years ago down in Florida against the Marlins while playing for San Diego was an incredible play. There's strength one to Graffinino. Yeah, his prowess going to his left, as a matter of fact, is how he hurt that shoulder. Left shoulder is a real problem for Ken. MVP a couple of years ago, and did he ever earn it? One ball, one strike. Matter of fact, several of these Padres are suffering from sore shoulders right now. Wally Joyner at first mm -hmm. base, Kilvio Veras, both shoulders injured at second base, and you mentioned Caminiti with the sore left shoulder at third base. Strike two on Graffinino. Greg Vaughn has had chronic shoulder trouble to the point where the trade with the New York Yankees didn't happen because he failed the physical. And he was sent back transaction wise to San Diego and a deal that would have brought Kenny Rogers a left handed pitcher Mariano Duncan the infielder to San Diego Graffinino strikes out and that is number seven recorded by Hitchcock two out uh, Tim mentioned uh, just a moment ago that Sterling Hitchcock had it all working here's proof split finger for a strikeout another split for a strikeout goes to his fastball blows it by Javi Lopez Goes to the curveball. Third inning, a fastball to get Tommy Glavin. Split finger in the dirt. And a split finger there to get Tony Graffinino. He's got everything going for him in this ball game so far. Now works to the pitcher Glavin with the bases empty and two out. And hits the outside corner, strike one. Tommy Glavin has been successful today because he mixes up his location. Sterling Hitchcock because he mixes up his pitches. 0 oh 2 on Glavin. The Padres in the sixth inning will have Gwynn, Vaughn, and Caminiti. And if Glavin is retired here, the Braves will have the top of the order in the sixth inning of game six. And that's the case. Strikeout number eight for Sterling Hitchcock. We move to the sixth inning here in Atlanta. No score. No score into the sixth. Dangerous inning for Tommy Glavin. You have a look at Ruben Rivera, who could come in for defense if the Padres score this half inning. Win. First pitch to Hopper to Galarraga. One away. And that's eight straight retired by Glavin. There's a big difference in Tom Glavin's game. Many times early in the game, he struggles with his release point. He falls behind a lot of hitters, works a lot of deep counts. But as the game progresses and he finds that release point, he throws balls intentionally working deep counts, as you mentioned earlier, to set up that change up on the outside corner, to set up that sinker on the outside corner. Early, I think he was missing unintentionally. Lately, I think he's been missing on purpose. Ball one to Vaughn. I said at the start that Vaughn would be tested and left. You would have figured that. The left-hander Hitchcock on the mound, but he has yet to see any action out in left field. It's one out of two at the plate. And now a one ball, one strike count. John Rocker starting to crank it up in case he has to pinch run. <laughs> There you go. From one rocker to the other. One out, nobody on. One ball, one strike. Two 
and one. John Rocker, the winning pitcher in game five, he's from Macon, Georgia. And Kevin Brown, the losing pitcher in game five from Macon, Georgia. I would venture to say that that is the first time in postseason play that the winner and loser of any one game has been from Macon, Georgia. Oh, I thought you were going to take a, no, an no. extra step and say no. from the same city. No. No. I got gotcha. you on that. Three balls and a strike on Vaughn. Well, they were going to be celebrating and making one way or the other. Vaughn with Caminiti on deck. Into left field and down for a hit in front of Batista. Greg Vaughn is two out of three. They have definitely missed his bat and his presence in this lineup. He's had two line drives for a couple of hits. Well, many times you'll see an infielder get locked up on a hard hit ball, but very rarely do you see an outfielder get locked up on a hard hit ball. That's to play that ball actually between his thighs to knock it down, keep it in front. Nice smother right there. So now Vaughn is on with one out. No score, top of the sixth inning, and Caminiti digs in. Ken is one out of two. That's a pitch you were talking about, Bob. That was an intentional miss right there. If Caminetti wanted to swing at it, it was going to be a ball off the plate inside. Again, to set the pitch up away. Like that. Over the corner, one ball, one strike. Well, if you're Bruce Bochy, you have to be a little concerned with Greg Vaughn running the bases. Uh, obviously, you'd like to see him get on base and hit the ball, but nursing that strained left quad, you have to be a little bit concerned when the big boy's out there running the bases. Especially in a scoreless game in the sixth inning. Caminetti fouls it back, strike two. Batting right handed Ken Caminiti more of a high ball hitter but at times will chase the high fastball out of the strike zone. We've seen Glavin tie him up on the inside part of the plate a couple of times with fastballs and as you might expect very aggressive. He's very aggressive in everything he does. That's right. The one two. Do it again. Six o'clock straight up here in Atlanta on the scoreboard here at Turner Field. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, Bob Friendly with you. All pitching so far. Total of six hits, four by San Diego. Sterling Hitchcock is trying to match Tom Glavin pitch for pitch. Padres up three games to two. Here's the one two to Caminetti. Two and two. So the hit by Vaughn broke up the string of eight in a row retired by Glavin and now Caminetti tries to get a hold of one full count with Layrich next and this really hampers Bruce Bochy as far as making a decision on whether to run Greg Vaughn or not. Under all other situations you send the guy on first but do you send your power hitter with a bad quadricep. He is going. Caminetti squirts it through the right side. Headed for third is Vaughn. And by starting the runner, bad leg and all, it ends up first and third, one out for San Diego here in the sixth inning. The wrong guy covered the second baseman, clearing the right side. Vaughn running, Caminetti jammed, but nobody there to catch the trickler. And I think that was by design. It looked to me like Caminetti was trying to push that ball to the right side. He may have been looking outside, too, for that fastball, and Clavin came in on him, broke his bat. Great for the Padres. Get a look at that swing from Caminetti. Looking to the right side as he swung the bat, found that hole and dribbled it into shallow right field. Yeah, I agree with you, Bob. After seeing the replay, it looked like he he saw Raffinino covering, perhaps, and tried to push it through the hole. Now first and third, one out for Lairitz. 
and a ball outside. So I'll ask you two guys this if they play everybody away with Glavin pitching why was the second baseman covering. Or perhaps the pitch wasn't in the location it was supposed to be and maybe it's just good hitting. Uh, yeah and I think Caminetti too doesn't hit a lot of ground balls the other way. First and third one down. Two balls no strikes on Larry. The way to prevent that from happening is to have the infielders come in first hold their position and then after contact is made then they determine where to go or if he swings through it then you can cover second base. Best scoring chance of the game for San Diego. And Leyridge takes a strike. He didn't agree with Steve Ripley. I fully look for Jim Leyridge to try to take a shot through that same hole on the right side. Galarraga holding Caminiti on first. Graffinino cheating close to second for the double play. And Leyridge throughout this series has gone to the opposite field. High heat got it past Leyridge two and two. And Glavin needs strikeout number three right here. Well, this is not a swing to take a shot to the right side. Jim Leyritz was trying to take a shot to the bleachers there in left field. The 2 2 pitch. Just up and in. And a full count on Leyritz. Leo Mazzoni wanted that pitch. The reason Glavin came in on Laritz, that's where he's more apt to get the strikeout. Inside, not outside. The 3 2 runner goes, and Laritz spoiled the pitch. Here's Mazzoni's reaction to that last 3 2 pitch. No sounds of the game there. I don't think we need any. Mazzoni wanted it. The Braves didn't get the call. Leyritz has since spoiled a 3 2 pitch and will get another. First and third, one out, no score, sixth inning of game six. Runner was going to the plate is Vaughn. The Padres take the lead on an RBI ground out by Jim Leyritz. One to nothing San Diego here in the sixth inning. Well by starting that runner at first base the Padres are able to stay out of the double play. The ball was hit in a good location for Vaughn to come home. Yeah, Chipper Jones with a nice barehanded play to get Leyritz at first. That is the same type of ball that Leyritz hit in game one when Ruben Rivera ran home after the throw to first base to give the Padres the lead. Now Joyner takes a ball with Caminiti at second. Padres started the runner each time with a full count at the plate. It paid off both times. Made off with Caminiti at the plate, Vaughn running, and then with Caminiti running and Leyritz at the plate. One ball, one strike on Joyner. I would imagine Greg Vaughn would be out of the ball game right now. Ruben, Ruben Rivera will replace him in left field. We'll have to see, but that would make sense. Strike two on Joyner. That's a decision for Bruce Bochy, but it didn't look to me like Vaughn had any ill effects of that strain left quad. At least that's true. If it's bothering him, it didn't show as he went first to third on the hit and then scored on the RBI ground up. Runner at second is Caminiti, two out. Joiner back up the middle and through. Here comes Caminiti. The throw by Andrew Jones not made. It's 2 0 San Diego in the sixth. So the Padres double their lead on this swing by Joyner. Little sinker. He tried to get on the outside corner, caught too much plate. I'll tell you, as effortlessly as Andrew Jones plays center field, that's the way Wally Joyner swings the bat. Never overswings, never off balance. Puts a bat on the ball and finds the hole up the middle of the field. So a two-run sixth inning for San Diego. 
One win away from their second World Series. Finley dumps one into left center. Joyner will stop at second. And that's four hits in this inning, plus the RBI ground out. Tom Glavin up to 116 pitches right now. We saw Leo Mazzoni on the phone to the bullpen as they scramble down in that Atlanta pen while Glavin struggles here in the sixth inning. You can hear the cheers about 4.5 on the Richter scale in Southern California about right now. And the visit from Leo Mazzoni out to talk to Glavin with two on two out. And the number eight hitter Chris Gomez at the plate trying to end the lead. Who else would get the runs started than Jim Layritz here in Atlanta against the Braves. It wasn't pretty. A little 5 3 ground out but it worked to put the first run on the board. And in a quirky way moved Caminetti to second base so he could score on the. 14 hopper by Joyner up the middle. Now two on two out for Gomez who has grounded out twice. No RBIs in this postseason as he takes the ball outside. Turner field awfully quiet again as the Padres have scored two to take the lead two on two out. 2-0 the count on Gomez. We talked about it in the opener, however. The Atlanta Braves have scored 11 runs in the last three innings, game four and five. Three and zero now on Gomez with the pitcher Hitchcock on deck. Braves bullpen is busy now Rocker joins Martinez. The 3-0 that'll load him up with two outs and Hitchcock will step to the plate with the bases loaded. Four hits and a walk in the inning against Glavin. And the pitching star of this game Sterling Hitchcock who has thrown five shutout innings with eight strikeouts. Has a chance to add to the Padre 2 0 lead. He did have uh, one hit in his last start, but it was to left field. He has no power the other way. You really have to shorten up if you're the left fielder, Danny Batista. Bases loaded, two down, and Hitchcock strike one. This is not the time to have a flare drop in front of you if you're a left fielder. Danny Batista, in my view, is too deep right now. He needs to play about Three more strides toward the infield. Bases loaded, two out, two runs in for San Diego, sixth inning, and Glavin trying to get out of a long inning as he hits the outside corner. Strike two on Hitchcock. Joyner, Finley, and Gomez, the runners. Vaughn and Caminetti have each scored in this inning. A little flare into left field. Batista makes the diving attempt. Didn't come up with it. Two more runs will score. And if he was too deep before the play, he tried to recover with a dive. Didn't come up with it. And it's four to nothing, San Diego. Well, this more than anything else cannot happen with a guy like Hitchcock hitting. This cannot happen. Bautista turned what should have been a routine play into a ball that hit the thumb of the glove and bounced away and a huge break for the Padres. Looked to me like he just missed that ball. He staggered a little bit coming in after it as he made his dive. He looked like he had his glove in a good position to catch it and just missed the ball. Bautista got there but on the dive could not make the connection. It's a four run sixth inning and the end of the day for Tom Glavin. Eight men came to the plate in this inning against Tom Glavin. The eighth man Hitchcock with his flare into left. Left handed uh, batter like Hitchcock. I mean they kid him on the Padres team about having a bad swing. 
And if he connects on a ball the other way, there is no way to drive it with any power. Ferris bats right handed, and what a play by Lopez to save another run. Walker, a hard thrower. This pitch hits out in front of home plate. Lopez able to center his body, take that ball off the chest protector, and keep it in front. First and third, two down. The ninth man to bat in the inning is Kilvio Varis, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. That's down the right field line, slicing foul. Out of play. One ball, one strike. We already showed you the postseason for Rocker earlier when we were talking about his mad dash from first base in game five. This postseason, he has been just about perfect. He scored more runs than he's allowed. <laughs> Kilvio Veras grabbing that left shoulder we mentioned, due for offseason surgery on that left shoulder, and apparently injured it somewhat on that swing as he came out of the batter's box. First and third, two down, one ball, one strike on Veras. A line drive, base hit into right center. Gomez will score, and it's five to nothing. San Diego in the fifth. Make it to the sixth inning. A base hit by Veras makes it a five-run frame. Sixth inning, and it's five nothing Padres. We're not done, fellas. We're not Aftershocks from cheering in San Diego. Veras going with the pitch to right center. So nine men come to the plate. It's a 5-0 San Diego lead. And now with two on, two out, Tony Gwynn, who started this inning with a ground out, digs in. Rocker drills the inside corner, strike one. Two on, two out. Win the other way through. Hitchcock will hold it third, and that'll load him up. So the Padres have batted around, and now Gwynn gets the base hit in his second at bat here in the sixth inning. Tony Gwynn using that 5.5 hole, the area between the third baseman and the shortstop. That's where this man has made his living for 17 years, right there. And now with Greg Vaughn coming up out of the dugout is Bobby Cox and we may never know the answer the question you posed earlier Tim if Bruce Bochy would have lifted Greg Vaughn for defensive reasons after the Padres came up with one run now Vaughn bats for the second time this inning he started this mess for Atlanta with a base hit five runs later it's five nothing San Diego here in the sixth inning in the sixth inning. Will hit the air Saturday night, 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific. The World Series only on Fox. So John Rocker not happy with the way he pitched here in this long sixth inning. The error by Danny Bautista really hurt. It's the seventh error of this series for the Atlanta Braves, and now Dennis Martinez is the third pitcher of the inning for Atlanta here in the sixth. Bases loaded two out and Vaughn a comebacker. Martinez stands it throws on to end the inning. So that'll do it for San Diego but a big five run sixth inning to take the lead here in game six. Well guys an interesting exchange as the Padres went back to the field. For the bottom of this sixth inning, Greg Vaughn was running out to his position, was called on by the bench for the San Diego Padres, looked back, and he kind of got in a little shouting match with the dugout, and I think, and I think you guys think, talked his way back into left field instead of being replaced by Ruben Rivera. I think he did. <laughs> Walt Weiss takes a strike. Well, there's a chance that Bond could get one more at bat in this ball game, but and the Padres obviously don't want to look past this game. You know, worry about saving him for the future. 
But I think uh, perhaps in this particular situation that Ruben Rivera would be the way to go a better defensive outfielder a healthy defensive outfielder and with a five nothing lead you want your better defensive team on the field at this point in the game. Two balls and a strike on Weiss leading off with Williams and Chipper Jones to follow. <laughs> Greg Vaughn developed a temporary deafness as he was walking out to left field they were screaming at him from the Padres bench and he refused to acknowledge them. And he turned around and had a few words with somebody not in a in a nasty way but basically pled his case and ends up in left field it would have been the perfect time to take him out he had just made the final out the top of this sixth inning three balls and a strike Walt Weiss leading off trying to get something started for Atlanta sixth inning and a lead off walk is a good start for the Braves. And that five run inning started so innocently with Greg Vaughn at first base running on the play the three two count look at Ferris at second going right to the bag the ball squirts into right field Vaughn, Vaughn makes it to third without a play and that set up the five run inning Four of those runs coming after two were out and then the error by Danny Bautista figuring in heavily. Braves had committed seven errors in this National League Championship Series. That makes it eight, which ties an LCS record. And it came at the most inopportune time for the Braves on the ball hit by Sterling Hitchcock. A little flare into left. Rocker didn't retire anyone, and Dennis Martinez avoided further trouble by getting. Vaughn with the bases loaded. Now Williams, after the leadoff walk, takes a strike. Bill Williams with a single, a stolen base. That came leading off in the fourth inning. Nasty pitch there to make it 0 2 on Williams. He's got the base hit back in the fourth inning, leading off on a fastball up and out over the plate. Hitchcock showed him a fastball on the first pitch on the outside corner, then goes right back to the split. So nicely blocked by Leritz, who predominantly worked behind the plate after he was picked up by San Diego, catching Sterling Hitchcock. And these two used to hook up in their days with the New York Yankees. Larix has started behind the plate in 14 of the 17 Hitchcock starts this year. Since being obtained from Boston back in June. A ball and two strikes and Williams took it down and in two and two. By the way with the error by Batista only two of the five runs that scored in the top of this sixth inning were earned against Tom Glavin. Ryan Bowringer, right hander getting ready. Just low and away, three and two. This is just for the sixth inning, the box score. It's up and down. In the middle of the order, got it started for San Diego. Hitchcock 0 for 1, but he reached on the error and hit the ball into left that produced not only the two runs on that play, but one more after. On the hit by Barris. Still three and two on Gerald Williams. Walt Weiss not running on the play, and that's one of the problems of being down by two, two or three or more runs in the middle of the late innings. It takes the aggressiveness away from your base runners. Starting the runners really paid off for the Padres in the top of this sixth inning. The 3 2 to Williams ripped down the left field line foul. That sixth inning for the Padres was reminiscent of the New York Yankees, the way I've seen many of their rallies go this year. Single here, single there, a walk, a single. A yeah, nice catch by the ball boy down the left field line. So the count still three and two on Gerald Williams one on with nobody out back to back walks and here comes Atlanta in the bottom of the sixth. And that 
that's going to be all for Sterling Hitchcock. With Chipper Jones, Andres Galarraga, and Javi Lopez coming up. Back to back walks to start the inning and with the heart of the Atlanta order coming up. Hitchcock did all he could through five, leaves here in the sixth inning with his Padres up five to nothing in game six. Hitchcock is finished, and now Brian Bullringer takes over in the bottom of the sixth inning. Five to nothing, San Diego. Two on, nobody out, and strike one to Chipper Jones. His only two games of this postseason coming in this NLCS. Third appearance. Atlanta down five to nothing. Strike two. Seen as the right hander, Denny Nagel, the left hander, getting ready for Atlanta in their bullpen. Ball and two strikes on Jones. Bruce Bochy wanted to get Hitchcock out of there in a hurry after the two walks, bringing in the right hander. Which allows Chipper Jones to bat left handed. And he takes strike three over the inside corner. And Chipper Jones continues to struggle in this NLCS. What a huge pitch that was for the Padres. I think Chipper Jones thought it was low. It was very close. Bobby Cox thought it was low. It was on the plate. Huge strikeout. So now two on with one out for Galarraga. That interestingly is Chipper Jones's long ball, that ball down and in that he just took. Galarraga into center field. Finley back to get it. Two out, and the runners will hold at first and second. So Brian Bullringer has come on with two on, nobody out. Struck out Chipper Jones. Gets Galarraga with one pitch. And now we'll work to Javi Lopez. Of course, Bullringer isn't out of it yet, but we have had so many unlikely heroes in this series. But Ozzie Guillen, Tony Graffanino with the double in game five. John Rocker, Michael Tucker, John Vanderwall with San Diego. Here's Lopez. Two on, two out, sixth inning. And a strike over the outside corner from Bullringer. Bullringer was with the New York Yankees when they played Atlanta back in the 1996 World Series. One ball, one strike. Bullringer appeared twice in that World Series. Five runs and five innings. Two balls and a strike to Javi Lopez, who's one for two. Two and two. Things are the bleakest. The Braves call on Javi Lopez. Two big home runs in this postseason. One against the Cubs, and then the opposite field home run to tie it in game four against Joey Hamilton. Lopez pops it up. Caminiti waits for it. The Braves put two on, fail to score. And we move to the seventh inning. Back to Atlanta after a break from your local Fox station. San Diego Padres carry a five to nothing lead as we move to the seventh inning. Have faith Padres. Go Padres keep the faith. Right now they are three innings away from moving on to the World Series. The only time in franchise history other than 1984 is Caminiti. 
Leads it off. It'll be Caminiti, Lairich, and Joyner. You know, you go into any postseason series with the Atlanta Braves and you talk about the pitching. But if the Braves fail to advance to the World Series, people around here are going to be talk talking about the Atlanta Braves hitting. Or lack thereof as Caminiti. It's one back to Martinez, high throw but out. Here at home, the Atlanta Braves, over their last 36 innings, have scored a total of four runs. And in this NLCS, you look at the middle of their lineup, Chipper Jones, Andres Galarraga, Javi Lopez, the three, four, and five hitters in today's game for Bobby Cox. Chipper Jones has one RBI this entire series. Galarraga has four, which all came on that grand slam swing. And Lopez has one. Doesn't matter how good your pitching is, if the middle of your order is doing nothing, you're not going to win. And the Braves are proving that to this point as Leyritz takes a strike. And I find it ironic that the two victories the Braves pitching staff has in this series came from a 34 year old grandfather and a 24 year old rookie. None of the vaunted starting rotation has figured in either one of the victories. Martinez is one of those two. Yeah. He's, he's a grandpa. He's a grandpa. Well, it's not John Rocker. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Later it's one out, nobody on. Strike two. Well, we're 0 for 1 uh, in defensive replacements. Greg Vaughn was not taken out, but normally Bruce Bochy will take out Jim Laritz when Hitchcock comes out of the game. So we could see a new catcher in the bottom of the seventh inning. A ball and two strikes. Laritz took outside, two and two. I don't know if, I, if I'm ready to say that we're 0 for 1. I think just the pleading on the part of Greg Vaughn kept him in the lineup. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on, and Leyritz stays alive. Jim Leyritz, San Diego Padres, getting closer and closer to New York. World Series begins on Saturday night. We're in the seventh inning. The Braves still plenty of chances, but they have got to wake up offensively. The 2-2 to Leyritz. Chipper Jones there for it. Leyritz is gone. Two out. One other side note, which is a side note right now, but if the Padres do advance to the World Series, a shot there briefly of Kevin Brown. They will have arrested Kevin Brown ready for game one in what would seem to be a matchup with David Wells on Saturday night. And Michael and all those Yankee scouts scouting feverishly now with more of a slant toward the Padre way as Joyner takes a strike it's one and one. Yeah, but the Yankees have no control over uh, this series, obviously. But uh, they were hoping and wishing and praying that it went at least seven games. So Kevin Brown would be used up. Greg Maddox would be used up. And both teams uh, would be tired in the process. Two balls and a strike. That's catcher Cam at rest again. Dave Stewart, the pitching coach for the Padres, on the phone in the background there. Joiner, two and two. And I understand that I'm over two in defensive replacements too, because I think Larris is coming back out there. He's got his equipment on. <laughs> but Bruce did tell us before Game One that normally when he takes Hitchcock out of the game, he takes Larris out also. Two out, nobody on. Two balls, two strikes on Wally Joyner. Full count. Again for Glavin, the starter, five and two thirds innings. 
two earned runs, five total, seven hits. The 3 2, Joyner pops it into left center. Andrew Jones back to get it. Dennis Martinez has faced four, retired four. It's time to stretch. For the Braves, it's time to get to work. Bottom of the seventh inning, five to nothing, San Diego. Seventh inning stretch is over. Now the bottom of the seventh inning and the bottom part of the order for the Atlanta Braves. Strike one from Bowringer. What a job Brian Bowringer did last inning. Came in, two on, nobody out, and went right through Chipper Jones, Andres Galarraga, and Javi Lopez to keep it a 5 nothing score. It remains 5 nothing. Sterling Hitchcock just watching now as Andrew Jones is in the hole 0 and 2. Talked about it in the opening, what the Braves have done over the last two games from the seventh inning on. 11 runs, six in game four, five in game five. Jones pops it up. Behind home plate for Leyritz, still in the game. One out. Four retired in succession by Bullringer. To show you how odd that was, the Braves winning the game because of their hitting in the late innings. The San Diego Padres were 75 and 7 this year when they had the lead after the sixth inning. And yet the Braves have come back, but they got a bigger hill to climb this evening. And a big reception for Michael Tucker, who digs in as the pinch hitter for Danny Batista. His five RBIs in game five. The major reason why there even is a game six. Here's the shot off Kevin Brown in the eighth inning. Two on and that drive put Atlanta out in front for good. To attack on two more and use all seven runs. And defeat San Diego seven to six in game five to force this game six. Three balls no strikes. Michael Tucker. Not impossible for the Braves. You look at what they've done this season. Three and one from Bowring. Jim Jim Laritz couldn't put the fastball sound down quick enough. And Bowringer misses with it for a one out walk. First man to reach against Bullringer is Tucker. And now Bruce Bochy is out of the dugout with the announcement of Keith Lockhart pinch hitting. Here comes Bruce Bochy and he calls on the left hander out of his bullpen. So Bullringer ends up facing five. He retired four of the five. Did great work to get out of the sixth inning. And the Padres make another call to their bullpen here in the seventh inning. Bottom of the seventh inning, one on, one out for Atlanta, trailing five to nothing. This week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, the Washington Redskins look to slow down the undefeated Minnesota Vikings. Then the Cowboys head to the Windy City to battle the Chicago Bears. Plus, other regional action. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. Check your local listings. Here's Mark Langston, the left-hander, out of the Padre bullpen. Bruce Bochy bringing on the lefty, really forcing Bobby Cox's hand here. Do you pinch hit for Keith Lockhart? At which point you'd have to bring Ozzie Gian into the ball game. It looks like Lockhart is going to stay in the game and hit against the left-handed pitching Langston. Greg Colburn also in the on-deck circle, more than likely to hit in the pitcher spot. Greg Maddox along with John Smoltz down in that Braves bullpen. The Atlanta Braves have just about everybody who can lift their arm out of that bullpen right now, including the scheduled starter for tomorrow night's game, Maddox. Right now, one on, one out for Lockhart, dealing with Langston. Ball 
on to Lockhart. I mentioned it the other night, Langston, a 15-year Major League veteran. Made his first appearance ever in the postseason back in game four. Worked in game five, and here he is in game six, and he misses 2-0. and oh. This has got to be driving Bruce Bochy and Dave Stewart. Wacko. Three walks with the five-run lead, and now Langston comes in, and he's 2-0 and oh against the left-handed batter, Lockhart. With Colburn on deck. A strike. It's 2-1. and one. That one right down the pipe. One on, one out. Lockhart pops it foul, and that will find the seats to make it two and two. Some walks are acceptable. Man on second base, big strong hitter at the plate, you pitch around him, that walk's acceptable. Five to nothing lead, you walk a guy, that's unacceptable. Always. Joey Hamilton, one of the starters. In the bullpen for San Diego along with Randy Myers. One on one out the 2 2 pitch. Lockhart strikes out. Langston gets the lefty. And now with Tucker at first the batter will be Colbert. After falling behind 2 and 0 was able to come back and even the count throws a nasty slider that swept all the way from the inside part of the plate. Just off of the outside corner, Lockhart with a defensive swing can't even get a piece of it. Three consecutive pinch hitters for Bobby Cox, and now Bruce Bochy is going to make another switch. I think that's a big reason that he didn't take Larritz out of the game because he can make a double switch and take Larritz out right now with the pitcher spot coming up third in the top of the eighth inning. That's you. That's on you. So Leritz exits. Langston will exit. He came on to face one, retire one as he struck out Lockhart. And with Colburn, the announced hitter, we saw Hamilton was throwing earlier. Carlos Hernandez will take over behind the plate. Another pitching change for San Diego here in the seventh inning. So Jim Leyritz is finished thanks to the double switch here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Takes off catcher Cam. And waves bye bye to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> catcher Cam. And our thanks again to Jim Leyritz and all who have worn catcher Cam in the postseason to this point. Leyritz is finished as Hamilton takes over. Hamilton will bat in the spot vacated by Leyritz. And the new catcher Carlos Hernandez will bat ninth. Greg Colburn breaks his bat, flies into left center field. Vaughn is on to make the catch, and that's the first test for Greg Vaughn in left field. So Joey Hamilton out of the bullpen to close out the seventh. Five nothing, Padres. Number of changes for the Braves. Gerald Williams switches to left field, staying in the game after pinch hitting. In right field is Michael Tucker. Keith Lockhart takes over at second base as Denny Nagel throws his first pitch and fouls. Sees Finley foul it back. There's Lockhart taking over at second base. Unsuccessful as a pinch hitter. And Finley backed up on the count 0 1 as Denny Nagel. Starter in game four brings it to the plate. Broken back ground ball to Lockhart. Fresh into the game. One away. That top of the sixth inning like a blur for the Padres and a nightmare for the Braves. And here it is. Here's a pop up off the bat of Gomez popped up to the right side like Lockhart makes that play two up two down for San Diego here in the eighth inning. Joe we saw that uh, 
that little clip right there uh, between innings about an inning ago and you brought up a great point all of those hits were either up the middle or the opposite way. The only out was Leritz who got on top of one and pulled it just a bit. Ground out 5 3 but it produced a run. The RBI ground out as Carlos Hernandez bats for the first time tonight. And takes a ball from Nagel. So each starter from game four involved in the game now. Hamilton closed out the bottom of the seventh. Nagel trying to work through a perfect eighth. Two balls, no strikes. Hernandez into left center field, a base hit. Carlos Hernandez reaches first with two out here in the eighth inning. Top half of this inning continues with Varis walking to the plate. Talked about Carlos Hernandez in San Diego, how he's eliminated the stride from his approach at the plate. He's going to shift his weight from back to front. He uses a lot of arms, a lot of upper body, and strokes one into left center field. And now Kilby Olveris. Olveris drove in the final run of that long sixth inning. Five run sixth inning and that's the Padre lead five nothing here in the eighth. A strike from Nagel. One ball one strike. You never know what's going to happen but Braves with the top of the order coming up in the eighth inning figure this will probably be their best chance their next at bat running through the top of the order. To the third baseman Jones that's a fair ball and out at first is Ferris to end the top of the eighth as Bob mentioned top of the order Weiss Williams Jones coming up for Atlanta. Down by five. Back at Turner Field. Braves running out of chances. They were down three games to none. They won games four and five to force this game six. But they find themselves trailing five to nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning. Top of the order coming up against Hamilton. A 94 mile per hour pitch is upstairs for ball one to Weiss. Is 0 for 2 with a walk. 2 and 0. Oh. 3 and 0, oh, and I would imagine that Bruce Bochy will not go very far with Joey Hamilton. He's got Myers warming up now, and he's got Hoffman waiting and. Bruce Bochy telling us before the game he would not hesitate to use Trevor Hoffman in the eighth inning. Weiss will take again here. And that miss for a leadoff walk. So the Braves get what they need a leadoff walk and now have Williams Jones Galarraga. The Braves hope many more here in the eighth inning. That is the fourth walk with a five nothing lead and Bruce Bochy more than anybody knows you cannot continue to tempt fate. Joey Hamilton. A leadoff walk and now time is called before the pitch so no pitch. Gerald Williams at the plate. Hamilton started game four. As you see time granted by Steve Ripley. Williams calling for it. A strike from Hamilton who started game number four back in San Diego worked into the seventh inning. Allowed four runs on seven hits. And that game tying home run to Javier Lopez one and one. And if you're thinking uh, why wouldn't Bobby Cox go to Ryan Klesko here. You're still trailing by five runs. Good pinch in under the hands by Hamilton. A ball and two strikes on Gerald Williams. If you would consider any pinch hitter right now, I'd be a guy like Ozzy Gee and a guy who could get on base to lead up to the power hitters and save Klesko for when you need the long ball. 
Two and two. And also Bruce Bochy has Randy Myers warmed up and ready to go. A left-hander in the bullpen in the event Bobby Cox does go to one of his left-handed pinch hitters. One away and a big strikeout for Joey Hamilton to bounce back after the leadoff walk to Weiss. Well, Joey Hamilton at times can just be overpowering with that sinking tailing fastball. You can see Williams swung right over the top of that pitch. Now it's Bull Ringer watching from the dugout bench. One of the four pitchers used tonight by San Diego. Starter was Hitchcock, then Bull Ringer, then Langston, now Hamilton, who gets a visit from Dave Stewart. Even though it's the middle of the order, I would imagine that Dave Stewart reminding Hamilton, don't try to be too cute here. Throw strikes. Who's left on the bench for Bobby Cox, Key and Klesko, and Malloy from the left side, Eddie Perez, the other catcher, the right hander. And that's it. And there is Trevor Hoffman. One on, one out. Strike one on Chipper Jones. 0 for 3 tonight. 5 out of 23 in this series with one RBI. Chipper Jones drove in 107 during the regular season. It's blocked by Hernandez. 1 and 1. Hard to believe, but Jimber Jones has not homered since the middle of September. It is now October 14th. Off the outside corner, two and one. Down the left side, slicing foul, two balls, two strikes on Chipper Jones. Well, if the Braves are going to get back into this game, you figure it's going to be with the long ball. That's been their M.O. throughout the regular season and the postseason. Strike quickly with a couple guys on base. Somebody hit a long ball. Hamilton doing a nice job of keeping the ball away from Chipper Jones, forcing him to hit it to the opposite field. Still two and two. Jones does have power the other way. However, that sinker not only sinks, but it's very heavy. And it's tough to lift a pitch like that. That's foul down the left side. Unless you get it up like that. High sinkers don't sink. <laughs> See Hernandez on that outside corner has to reach up above his mask to try to catch that ball. And Jones fouls it down a third baseline. Now Weiss is running and another foul ball. In the ninth inning, you wouldn't consider this, but in the eighth inning, if they're going to give you second base, why not take it? Just to back up your point, Bob, the 33 run scored in this postseason for the Atlanta Braves. 20 of them have come on the home run ball. So they have not been able to manufacture much. Get them on, get them over, get them in. Weiss is on with a leadoff walk there with one out and Jones hits it to first. Joyner knocks it down, feeds Hamilton, two out. Chipper Jones now 0 for 4. And the batter will be Galarraga. That's why you play the first baseman behind the runner with the five run lead. Had Joyner been holding him on, that ball may have gotten through on the right side a fine play by Joyner to knock it down and make sure a one and that's the mindset of every infielder right now make sure of one Joyner got absolutely no leather on that ball that was all chest Wanted to make sure to keep the glove down low in case the ball scooted he'd be able to knock it down with the glove if it came up high like it did he'd be able to knock it down with his body and now Galarraga Runner at second, Weiss, went off with a walk, two out, and a squirter back to Hamilton. Outfitting the heart of the order after a leadoff walk to Weiss would do nothing. Williams struck out, Jones grounded out, as did Galarraga. We go to the ninth. 
six of this 1998 NLCS. San Diego out in front five to nothing. One full inning away from returning to the World Series. The first time since 1984. The second time in their franchise history. Tony Gwynn takes a ball inside from Nagel. Win takes it high 2 and 0. It's been a long wait for Tony Gwynn, who was in his second full season back in 1984. The Padres advanced through the Chicago Cubs and lost to Detroit in the World Series. 3 and 0 from Nagel. Just to prove longest duration between World Series appearances. Tony Gwynn, 14 years. There's a strike, 3 and 1. Jim Cott. Leading the way with 16 years in between. To the shortstop Weiss. Good play to his left. Win gone for the first down here in the top of the ninth. Tony Gwynn will end this game six with a couple of hits. Two out of five. And the batter will be Vaughn. He's seen as getting ready just in case the Padres put something together here. In the top of the ninth inning, Vaughn. Well, his impact, Tim, and his presence was felt immediately here in his first start since game one. Scoring the first run of the game and the first run in that five run sixth inning. Aside from that, no scoring by either side this evening. Matter of fact, the Braves only have two hits, both of those hits in one inning. Aside from that, they have just been shut down by the Padres staff. Combination of Hitchcock, Bowringer, Langston, Hamilton, and you would think eventually Hoffman. Two and one. At least Hoffman will get his shot. Padres gave up a leadoff walk to Weiss in the bottom of the eighth inning, but Williams, Jones, and Galarraga went in order. Kevin Towers, the general manager of the San Diego Padres. On a cool night in Atlanta, sweating through a ninth inning. Two balls, two strikes on Vaughn. And then there's John Sherholtz, who, along with Stan Caston, year after year after year, are the envy of other major league franchises. What a job those two have done here in Atlanta. The architects of this Atlanta Braves success in the 90s. Three balls, two strikes on Vaughn. And the only three years that the Braves have not gone to the World Series were the years in which they won over 100. 93, they lost to the Phillies. 97, that was last year, they lost to Florida. And this year, if they lose here tonight, won 106 games during the regular season. Vaughn draw, draws a one-out walk. And Caminiti will walk in. We all gathered getting ready for this National League Championship Series involving Atlanta, wondering amongst ourselves if the Braves needed to win another world championship, which they won back in 1995 with mainly this group. Some additions, some subtractions along the way, most notably McGriff, David Justice, but some big additions since then as well. Wondering if they needed to win another world championship to validate themselves as a dynasty here in the 90s. One on, one out, one ball, no strikes, and that's off the end of the bat, one and one on Caminiti. It seemed like validation came with every team in the postseason. I mean, Cleveland won the pennant in 95. They lost the World Series. They won the pennant last year. They lost the World Series in game seven. The New York Yankees, even though they won in 96, won 114 games this year. Everybody's saying that if they lose the World Series, it will be the most disappointing of any of the teams. That's an arguable point, but certainly the Braves not getting to the World Series, very disappointing to this franchise. Just short of greatness. The Braves, 
great run 1991 through 1998. Seven division titles the Braves seven times to the LCS one World Series title in 95 but this game and this series not over the Braves have one more at bat with Lopez Jones and Tucker the scheduled hitters in the bottom of the inning two and two on Caminiti. But again you go back to John Sherhold Stan Caston and Bobby Cox yep who was the general manager for the Atlanta Braves from 1985 to 1990 and responsible for some of the success a lot of the success the Braves have had in the 90s over the inside corner Caminiti is gone and that's the second out here in the top of the ninth inning. A wicked fastball from Denny Nagel after all of those change ups and assortment of breaking balls he busts Caminiti in on the hands. Fine pitch by Denny Nagel. And now Ruben Rivera. Who will bat for Hamilton. And that should just about seal it. We ought to see Trevor Hoffman in the bottom of this ninth inning. Runner at first with two out. And Rivera up on the count two and oh. Two balls and a strike. We talked about Bobby Cox who deserves a lot more credit than he gets. Not only being the general manager here and helping to set all this up 1985 to 1990 but for being the manager of this team and doing such a wonderful job on the field as Rivera takes outside. But while we say that I'm going to look into the other dugout at Bruce Bochy and the job he has done. The 43 year old manager in just his fourth year has won two division titles and may take the Padres back to the World Series. The 2 2 pitch. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Atlanta Braves. Down three games to two. And here in game six, trailing five to nothing. Addition of Andres Galarraga this year. What a regular season. Driving in 121. But how about the regular season for Trevor Hoffman? Saving 53 in 54 opportunities. Tell you what the Atlanta Braves have to do as you see Ruben Rivera in left field or in right field I beg your pardon. But here's what the Atlanta Braves have to do with three outs they have to score five runs at least to tie against Trevor Hoffman in 66 games this year Hoffman only gave up 12 runs. That is straight uphill for the Atlanta Braves. And the numbers for Hoffman in this postseason. He has saved three, one in this LCS. And a number that you hear kicked around a lot in 1998, including the playoffs, the Padres 91 and 0 when leading after eight. And dating back to July of 1996, 180 and 0 when leading after eight. Joe you also talked about Bruce Bochy. I think uh, the respect that this ball club has for him and the way he handles this club indicative of some of his remarks before the game that loss in game five was absolutely excruciating and to forget it is a very difficult thing to do but that's what the Padres have done tonight. Trevor Hoffman takes over. Javi Lopez leads it off and takes a strike. And a lot of the reasons that you can forget about something like that is because of the guy who's leading you. And that in this case is Bruce Bochy. Strike two on Lopez from Trevor Hoffman. The San Diego Padres are three outs away from going to the 1998 World Series to take on the New York Yankees. The 0 2 to Lopez. Ball and two strikes. And 
Andrew Jones will follow and then Michael Tucker. One away and the Padres are two outs away. Bob and I have talked about the rocking chair uh, with guys who work inside and outside. Well it's a kind of a rocking chair that Hoffman keeps hitters in too with that great I mean a devastating change up with the high leg kick and the same arm motion that he has for his fastball. That high leg kick part of the reason that uh, he is so effective. Now Andrew Jones strike one. Andrew Jones tonight 0 for 3. Six out of 21 in this series against San Diego. To the shortstop Gomez. Across the infield the Padres are one out away from the 1998 World Series. A look at Sterling Hitchcock and what a job he did tonight in five innings. No runs, two hits, struck out eight. And also hit a very important fly ball into shallow left, which led to an error by Danny Batista and eventually three extra runs. Here is Michael Tucker. A magical game in game five. Right now, the last hope for the Braves to extend this ninth inning. One ball, one strike. And again, by the Padres winning tonight. They have Kevin Brown available to open against the Yankees on Saturday night. That is a huge, huge thing. Michael Tucker with two out, nobody on. The fly ball into shallow left center. Long run for Finley. The Padres are going to the 1998 World Series. <laughs> It, but the small crowd on the field isn't. And you can bet they are celebrating back in San Diego. It has been a long wait, 14 years. They were there in 1984. They will be there in 1998 to take on the New York Yankees. How fitting for the game to end with Trevor Hoffman on the mound. Sterling Hitchcock, who started the game on the mound for San Diego is our Chevy trucks player of the game. He came in on three days rest and had to match up with Tom Glavin. The first game he has ever won in the big leagues on three days rest following a start. <laughs> what a time to do it. And he comes up with two victories two and zero, oh, in this 1998 NLCS against the Atlanta Braves only the fourth starting pitcher to do that against the Atlanta Braves in this run of seven consecutive league championship series. Tony Gwynn heads off the playing field into the clubhouse as the celebration continues. Some start to wind their way back to the San Diego clubhouse for the celebration. Gwynn last celebrated a trip to the World Series in 1984. And he will celebrate with these teammates in 1998, including Jim Leyritz, who knocked in the first run of this game six. What compelling stories as the Padres head north and not west. The San Diego Padres came in, underdogs against the Houston Astros, took care of them. In four games they came in to take on the Atlanta Braves underdogs they take care of the Atlanta Braves in six games. 
And right now we take you to Steve Lyons who's standing by with Tony Gwynn. Steve. Keep all right, all right, all right, guys, thank you very much. We have Tony Gwynn down here. It's starting to get ugly already, but Tony, 14 years ago, you go to the World Series as a younger player. Yeah. Did it take you, do you think it was going to take you that long to get back? No, I didn't, you know, but uh, for some reason, I, I felt like I felt like this club was special, you know, and uh, and even <laughs> even though, uh, you know, we win the first three games of the series and, and we and we turn around and lose two, I still had a lot of faith in these guys, and, and tonight showed. I mean, we battled, got a great pitching performance by Sterling Hitchcock, and here we are. It was a crushing defeat in game five. Talk to me about the character of this team that they were able to come back after Yeah, that. well, after that game, I think a lot of guys uh, kind of took stock in themselves. You know, we had the music going like we normally do. We didn't change anything. Uh, we tried to keep our same uh, our same things that we do every day. And even coming here, I think we were really confident. We really felt like we could win this game tonight. And sure enough, and sure enough, sure enough, we did. You're going to the biggest stage there is, and you're going to do it against the Yankees. Yeah. This pitching staff can match up against that team. They haven't been given any respect yeah. all year long. They can do this. Well, we hope so. You know, uh, for me, it's a big thrill. I've never been to New York, never been to, or never been to Yankee Stadium, and uh, going to get an opportunity to play there. But, uh, you know, we're going to celebrate tonight, try to get focused somewhere down the road. Right now, this, this is a great day for us, I think. We, we, we really stepped up. We really played well. And, and we get to go to, your, to the series as a reward. Tony, I'm going to let you start doing that celebration <laughs> okay. right now. Joe, let's send it back up to you. All right, Steve. Congratulations to Tony Gwynn. He's never been to Yankee Stadium, and now he'll start out in right field on Saturday night. Little does he know what he's in for at Yankee Stadium. With that crowd, they will be juiced up. Much, much, much more coming up after these words. Congratulations to the Padres. They're going to the World Series on the heels of this 5-0 victory in Game 6. Presentation for the National League Championship Series. Joe. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Down in the Padre locker room, I'm joined by the president of the National League, Mr. Leonard Coleman, to present the hardware. Thank you, Chip. To uh, team owner John Morris, President uh, Larry Lakino, general manager Kevin Tower, certainly manager Boots Bochy. Uh, <laughs> the Padres put on a had dogged determination of putting on a magnificent overall team performance against a great, brave team. And indeed, we look forward to you representing us very well in the World Series beginning in, in New York. Congratulations to the Padres. Thank you very much, Mr. Lucchino, what a team you all have assembled in San Diego. Chip, it's a, it's a great thrill to win this. It's a, it's this. We take this on behalf of these players out here and the passionate fans we have in San Diego and all over Baja California as well. It's great, and we're very thrilled to, to have this. 14 years between sips of champagne, was the wait worth it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's a great thrill, and it's a great thrill for all of us, and we're just looking forward to the World Series. Larry, to you and Mr. Morris, congratulations. Let's bring on the general manager, Kevin Towers. What a ball club you all assembled here. What a giant killing team you guys have put together. I tell you what, I can't say enough about these guys all year. They've been resilient, won three games, came back, lost two, had to come in against a tough Atlanta club. Our skipper, I think, just did a hell of a job managing Sterling Hitchcock, big outing. Guys off the bench, the king, everybody, the city of San Diego, this is yours. I, I know in 1992 you were a pirate scout sitting in your hotel room in Toronto watching the Braves steal that win from you all when you were with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Does this in any way give you some sense of redemption? Oh, I tell you what, the last couple of games I said I'm not counting outs and sure enough they came back and tonight I said I'm not going to say anything about outs, no peanuts, nothing. Wait till that last out was made and uh, I, know, I thought I'd never be in this position again. I'm, uh, I, I'm lost for words. And Kevin, I know you have an awful lot of respect for Bobby Cox and his Braves. You all put together a team very similar to theirs. Great pitching, a great bullpen, and your club play with an awful lot of character, not only all year long, but in this series. Well, I tell you what, Bobby's one of the best managers in the game, if not the best, and John Sherholtz, matter of fact, when Larry hired me, he asked me what organization we would want to model ours after, and it was the Atlanta Braves. You know, and this is uh, this is a, a stepping stone, hopefully, to uh, many, many more championships. Well, Kevin, again, congratulations on the team you put together, and good luck in the World Thank Series. You, All right, Kevin that, Towers, right? let's talk to the manager, the skipper of the San Diego Padres, Bruce Boshi. Man, the man with the Midas touch in this series. Everything you touch turned to gold, and you're the National League champions. Congratulations. Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> For a couple of games, uh, it seemed like all the moves I made uh, weren't working at all. But I, I can't say enough about the heart. And, determination this club played with. I mean, to go against two great ball clubs like Houston and Atlanta, 
It, it doesn't get any better than this. Everybody kept calling you all underdogs, not only in your series against Houston, but in this series with the Braves. If you all aren't careful, you're going to shed that underdog label for good because now you got to take on the Yankees. Well, I tell you, I, I never knew I'd like New York as much. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, we, we should have been underdog. We, we stumbled there in September. The, the two clubs we played had better records, but the heart that, that these guys played with was just unbelievable. Well, Bruce, I know there's one more mile for you to, guys to, to go. That's, of course, against the Yankees in the World Series. Why don't you go enjoy the celebration? All right, thanks, Jeff. Thanks. All right, Bruce Boshi, the skipper of the San Diego Padres. We have one more piece of hardware to hand out. We'll do that after we take a break. They're going wild here in Atlanta and in San Diego, too. The Padres are the champions of the National League. of the National League. They advance to the World Series to take on the New York Yankees. Hi again, Chip Carey from the Padres locker room. One more piece of hardware to hand out again, the president of the National League, Mr. Leonard Coleman. Oh, thank you, Chip. Sterling Hitchcock, you really pitched your heart out in two gutty performances. You're a most deserving winner of the National League Championship Series Most Valuable Player Award. Thank you so much. Good. Congratulations. Sterling Hitchcock, this is a time of unsung heroes. Did you ever in your wildest imagination think you would be the most valuable player of this series? No, I sure didn't. And, and you know, first off, I got to praise God for this. I... Uh, all, through, all through this postseason, he's just given me a tremendous calm and peace. And, and without him, I couldn't have done this. But, you know, I, I can't say enough for the 24 other guys in this locker room and uh, for Stu and, and, and the coaching staff. And it, it's just been an awesome. It's been a team team effort the whole year long. As I said with your uh, your pitcher, your manager, Bruce Boshi, you guys have been underdogs all year long. You may be an underdog as well, pitching on three days rest, something you hadn't had much success doing, but today you were masterful. You know, thank you. I, before in the past, I, I haven't had a whole lot of luck on three days, but the, the two starts here in postseason, I haven't thrown a whole lot of pitches, and, and I just thank Stu and Boshi for giving me the opportunity to go out there. You know, they, they put a lot of confidence in me. And now a former Yankee, you're going to get a shot at the Yankees once again. Wouldn't that be fun? It, it will. You know, it did, doesn't matter who would be playing. Uh, it, it's going to be the time of my life. I just so excited.